we're driving a 2023 Range Rover. Coming up, we're gonna take the concept of tailgating to classy new heights. But first, information explosion. The Range Rover was all new for 2022. We're driving a 2023 model. Let's begin with interior. There's a really streamlined but luxurious aesthetic in here. Leather, wood. That is actual wood. They call it natural black birch veneer. Ooh. There is also an abundance of small storage in here. There is a dual glove box. And one very fun spot to store stuff is this cool box, which with the push of a button, you can set to two different cold settings. It, I just thought of a use for that. You know, you'd probably want to put beverages in there. We can put our overheating GoPros in the cool box. Hey! And that's probably <laughs> going to happen if I know my GoPros. And if you'd like to buy a GoPro, use the affiliate link below. It'll probably overheat, but we'll get a little bit of money in the process. You're right though, there is a real luxe feel in here. Uh, and also these like paddle shifters. That Ooh. really nice metal sound, it's very elite. Now there is also some weirdness. Let's talk about the climate controls. Uh, my complaint is that the center, I guess, interface, it's like kind of one whole panel and you really have to push hard. For example, it's not sinking now and I don't know why. And you are pushing hard. And then there's these knobs. They control the HVAC, fan speed, temperature, seat heater, and seat cooler. And you get to all those different modes by pressing and pulling. I feel like I have to look at it to know what I'm doing. And I don't want to have to look at it. I just want to quickly make a change and not have to get involved in four different stages of inception. <laughs> Skewing back to the positive, how do you find that seat comfort? These seats are awesome. I never fit correctly in a seat. The lumbar support is always at the wrong spot. The head support always is too far forward for me because I'm short, but I can adjust all that in this menu here. I kind of like having controls easily accessible rather than having to go through a menu. If you just need minor adjustability, like forward and back and the angle of your seat, you can adjust that right here. If you go to the second row, that also offers a power recline, which is a standard feature. In terms of occupant space, behind my ideal front seat position, I have plenty of headroom, I've got decent knee clearance, good foot space, and let's all say it together, I'm five foot ten with a long torso. I was also impressed that I could fit in the middle position with uh, reasonable comfort. The Range Rover we're driving is the short wheelbase version. They also sell a long wheelbase version that adds a third row of seats for a total of seven seats in case that's a need you have. For cargo space, there are 40.7 cubic feet available. I know it's pretty great, it's, it's a lot of space, but how you access it is really interesting. How do you feel about the split uh, lift gate? Oh, I hate that. Why? <laughs> As I've mentioned, as often as you've mentioned your long torso, I'm short, so it's very difficult once that tailgate is open for me to reach the very back of the cargo area. So you get that little platform that kind of pops down, which is cool for easy slide in because you don't have to lean past like a bumper or something like that. But if you want to get the stuff back out, that can be tricky. Now there is no underfloor storage because this particular Range Rover has a full size spare, a 22 inch tire and wheel package back there, which is impressive. And useful, especially since you might be taking this off road. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, that's a thing that might happen. <laughs> We also have the load space floor where you can flip up a panel and you can uh, use these little like uh, bungee spots to uh, hold items in place and separate your cargo. Now, as teased in the beginning of the video, we're gonna take tailgating to classy new heights with a little something called the tailgate event suite. Wow. If you like sitting, and I mean really sitting, this is gonna be $1,250 well spent. Or actually it would be if ours um, had it. So I looked at the window sticker and it said it had the feature and then I came out here and it actually doesn't have 
of the feature. What it is, is some cushions that flip out that you can sit on on the tailgate, and then another cushion that uh, you can uh, put in place that attaches to the little uh, flip up load floor so you have a, a seat back, and then you've got speakers in the uh, lift gate above and uh, little lights there, and you can just have a moment listening to inspirational music as you're watching fireworks, whatever you want to do. So the part we're missing is the cushion. Thankfully, Land Rover, Range Rover UK put out a video showing what the function looks like, and it's hilarious because they've got this like marginally animated character using it, just sitting by himself, enjoying the tailgate event suite, kind of poorly rendered. We make fun, but I think that's a feature we actually would make use of. Mm -hmm. Now, kiddo, how do you find getting in and out of this vehicle? Yeah, it is made easier by the fact that we've got a standard air suspension and it can lower into that access height position, which certainly makes it easier to get in and out for kids and also uh, elderly relatives if you happen to have some of those. Now, any issues getting the booster seat installed? No issues getting the booster seat installed. There's no covers over them. I do like that the seat belt holder has little lights on it. If you're um, buckling your kid up in the dark, that comes in super handy. As for safety, we've got a full suite of active driver assist, lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking. We've got six airbags, also blind spot warning is standard. Neither the NHTSA nor IIHS have rated the Range Rover yet, but I don't know, it's probably pretty safe. Pretty safe? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> family, what do we think? Is the Range Rover family friendly? Yay! Family friendly. It is family friendly. And by the way, some people in the comments have noted that, wait, what are you talking about? Like $130,000 SUV is family friendly. We recognize that uh, not every family can afford that. So moving forward, if the vehicle price for our trim recommendation is higher than $50,000, we're going to add an addendum. Yay! It's rich family friendly. Rear window test. Almost all the way down. Boop. Armrest test. Oh, this is a special one because I've got a dedicated inboard armrest here that I can adjust the height on and it's got a really solid squish factor. It's perfectly positioned because it's exactly where I want it to be. Outboard, by contrast, is not nearly as accommodating but just because this one is so good. I'm going to go like 95% inboard and let's say 80% outboard. Hey! Would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family plus the occasional helicopter adventure? If so, please subscribe. Style. Very quickly, I'm gonna thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eye Sunglasses. They're bendable because they're made out of material that no other sunglass company can use. Resilamide, so they're extremely lightweight, durable, and I love my white Ospreys with the mirrored emerald lenses. Oh, and look, Sweetie wears her glasses day in and day out, and they got those removable magnetic tinted lenses. If you would appreciate aviation grade eyewear, click the link in the description below, use the promo code MICA, and you can save 10% on Flying Eyes. It's not that large of a vehicle objectively, but it looks huge. I think it's because of the verticality of the sides, and I really like how streamlined it is. The headlights and the taillights in particular are so integrated into the vehicle. At first, I didn't know where the taillights were. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because what you have is sort of a boxy silhouette, but a sleek execution. And it's an interesting combination. It definitely has like a, a stature to it. You like to think that mass is absolute. Oh, hey, look, it happened. Uh, the GoPro failed. Let's put it in the cooler. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yes, we like the look of the Range Rover. What do you think? Do you like the Range Rover style? If so, if no, tell us in the comment section, in motion. Driving around this Range Rover, there is an all-encompassing tone of quiet dignity. It is literally quiet, uh, which I experienced on my freeway drive home. We've got a standard air suspension with adaptive dampers, and it does an impeccable job just smoothing all this stuff out. I would say it glides. There is plenty of power available. Now, I did notice a little delay between when I floored it and when the power came in there. But uh, in terms of total power, I think it's got plenty of, of grunt. And I really like how that power is delivered. The eight-speed automatic transmission, I think, does a really nice job matching the same tone as the effortless driving demeanor. The electronic stability control will intervene fairly early to keep you from driving too, too fast, because there is a lot of mass here, like two and a half tons. But I find the cornering behavior to be 
competent. The thing I noticed about the steering is it has that exact same quality as the ride and the powertrain. Smooth, effortless, not a ton of uh, weight to it, but weighty enough. Oh, and the thing that blew my mind driving the Range Rover, turning circle. I was making such tight turns that I was like, I have to investigate this. Why is this happening? I did not realize that the Range Rover has standard four wheel steering and the rear tires turn a lot. It explains why this thing can really turn on a dime, which is the kind of thing that might come in handy if you were to drive it off road. And if you're wondering, wait, why aren't they driving it off road? It's because for this vehicle loan, they specifically asked us not to. I'm gonna um, respect that request. It is $130,000 worth of vehicle. Though I will point out that uh, four wheel drive comes standard with a low speed transfer case. You got that air suspension, so you can uh, get pretty decent ride height, a max of 11.6 inches. There are a range of drive modes to customize vehicle behavior for the terrain you're driving over. And then if against better judgment, you do wanna take your six figure SUV through the bush and go do some uh, you know, more challenging off-road. The advanced off-road capability pack uh, adds a few little niceties that um, enable that, including an electronic rear locking differential. So yes, the Range Rover is, I think, a very capable off-roader, but we're not going to prove that fact today. All right, I've shared my thoughts, but what does Sweetie think? Sweetie's at the wheel, floor it from a stop. Whee! How's that feel? Is this turbocharged and supercharged? Sure is, sweetie. <laughs> Thanks for putting that in the outline. That felt like good power. It is good power off the line, but then even more power comes in as it gets going. Yeah. So it might make you think that there's not enough power off the line because more happens later, but it is, it's strong and then it's stronger. How does it feel turning this? Because there's a lot of mass here. Do you feel like you can handle it coming around the corners? Oh yeah. Well, I don't want to get weird. <laughs> okay, well then you should have picked someone else to host these videos with you. <laughs> it's like me and just like some dude who's a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're too weird, kiddo. <laughs> you were raised by me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, like, how do you find drive with this thing? Is it it's, okay? It's good, I like it. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> what about visibility? Any issues there? There are no issues with visibility. The windows are big, I can see all around. There's a lot of money in this car. Do you enjoy driving it enough to counteract the trepidation you have driving something super expensive? Most of the time I enjoy it until I remember how much it costs and there's a crippling sense of panic. Okay, well, before we hit that crippling sense of panic again, I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, the Range Rover drives like it looks. It's got authority and dignity, and it doesn't have anything to prove to anyone. It's just quietly comfortable and competent. Moving onward to emotion factor. What's the emotional landscape we're driving through here? I think because it's an emotion that's kind of eluded me for so many years, confidence mm. <laughs> is what I feel from this vehicle. It's luxurious, it's imposing, it's... Um, commanding. Commanding, what an excellent word, yes. Does it make you feel those things or do you feel inadequate compared to it? <laughs> I am borrowing a little of that just by being in here. I think what it's doing with all of those different attributes is getting status. Oh yeah, I have heard that about this vehicle. And if that's the kind of thing you're into with your car, and I think maybe everybody is to varying degrees, then uh, this will certainly check that box. We're feeling some emotion here, but how about you? Are you feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Range Rover of your very own? If you are- Congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> you've done well in your life. You probably don't need to sell your current car, but if you do need to sell your current car, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. You can find out what your current car is worth and what you should spend on your upcoming Range Rover. Moving onward to remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. There's a standard 13.1 inch screen. It includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Wireless as standard. How do you find using this interface? I like using this interface. There are shortcuts here for the actions you would use most often like nav and music. And then if you push this button, there is a menu with a lot more options, but I found it easy to find what I was looking for despite the many, many things this vehicle can do. I also like the fact that there's a standard 360 degree camera system with so many angles. That's the kind of visibility that will keep you from scraping up your sweet 22 inch wheels when you're uh, making your way up to that uh, remote spot so you can enjoy your tailgate event suite. Is that what it's called? <laughs> 
Now we have to talk about a quartet of weird behaviors we've noticed driving this Range Rover. Item one, there is distortion in the windshield here, and it's bad enough that even she noticed it, and she's got terrible vision. <laughs> Item two, when I first picked this up, anytime I'd make a left turn, I'd get a coolant low warning over here. I added coolant, and that solved the problem. I have noticed a coolant smell, uh, but I think we're okay. Item three, in order for the temperature to be comfortable in here, I have to have the climate control set extremely low. It's set to 60 degrees. It is not 60 degrees in the vehicle. And then item four, the driver's door creaks. Kiddo, do you want to tell everybody why that's hilarious? I heard it and I said to mommy, mommy, are you farting? <laughs> Were you? No. It was the door. It was the door. <laughs> you guys, it was the door. Now this might seem like a flaw, but I call this plausible deniability. <laughs> that couldn't be a more natural segue into everybody's favorite segment, the Musio family smell test. Our daughter doesn't like new car smell, and we know some people might agree with her. Kiddo, how do you find the smell of the Range Rover we're driving? Is it good, bad, or just okay? Just okay. Just okay. And that was the Musio family smell test. All right, let's talk engine choices. The basic engine is a three liter inline six that's both supercharged and turbocharged. There's also a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 available, and a three liter inline six that is a plug-in hybrid that'll cover 48 miles under pure electric range. Regardless of engine, max tow is 8,200 pounds. Sweetie? Yeah. Can I give you a trim recommendation? You sure can. Our trim recommendation is which Range Rover trim will give you the essential features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. For our trim recommendation, we think the base Range Rover trim is plenty. It's got a power tailgate, three zone climate control, leather, 20 way power adjustable front seats, seat heating and ventilation, both front and rear, a panoramic roof, soft closed doors, smart key access, and a ton of customizability. Base price, $106,500. But if you want to spend more money, there are fancier trims. By the way, for 2024, there are a few updates. The base price has jumped slightly. The plug-in hybrid version has been revised. It makes more power and it has more EV range. There's a new V8 for the SV trim that makes 606 horsepower and a pure electric version of the Range Rover is going to join the lineup. As for competitors, we've got the BMW X7, Mercedes-Benz GLS, Cadillac Escalade, or for a cheaper alternative, how about the Jeep Grand Wagoneer? And if you're curious what we thought about that Jeep Grand Wagoneer, you can click right up here. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Range Rover, it is a grand English way to glide over varied terrain. To me, it is the SRN hovercraft of luxury SUVs. That's what I said until I clicked the link in the outline. What, am I the only Hovercraft fan here? <laughs> Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Range Rover. May I have a five and a five and you come get your high five. Bam! <laughs>